Welcome to Deed and Truth. This is Tommy. I'm your host today, and we're going to be talking about boycotts because you know what? Why not? Why not talk about boycotts? I mean, it feels like boycotts are being handed out more frequently than books on the Oprah Winfrey show. Like you get a boycott and you get a boycott and you get a boycott. So while everybody's getting boycotts and everybody on the news and social media is talking about it, well, I'm going to talk about it too. But I really, I'm not here to talk about whether you should or should not boycott a group, company, or organization. I'm here because I want to talk to Christians about our hearts behind boycotts, what our motivating factor is, what kind of our desire is for whatever the end result is supposed to be, and and just kind of challenging us in regards to our view of sin in general. But before I do all of that, I want to address one question that comes up often regarding boycotts, and that is, aren't boycotts the same thing as cancel culture? And I know, I know what this is. This is an attempt to basically say that if you do a boycott, you're a hypocrite. If you do a boycott and you say cancel culture is bad, you are all up in some hypocrisy. And so let's address that question. Do I believe boycotts and cancel culture are the same thing? No, I do not. And let me explain why. Cancel culture is very personal. That's the difference. Cancel culture seeks to ruin a person, an individual's life, like dox them, put their email, phone number, address out there, like encourage people to go yell outside their home, throw eggs and TP the yard. I don't know if people still do that, but you know, it prank columns, send them spam emails. Uh, Cancel culture attempts to get people fired, removed from board positions, removed from volunteer uh, positions, banned from places. Like it, it seeks to completely ruin an individual's life. Where boycotts are just saying, hey, don't spend your money over there. Don't give that company your money. It's not an individual attack. It's not an attempt to ruin an individual's life. So that's where I I see the difference between the two. Now, there are some things I want to talk about later uh, in regards to potential hypocrisy. So uh, we will address that. But but I wanted to answer that question first. Now, look, boycotts aren't anything new. All right. My first boycott that I ever saw and, you know, was a part of was like 30 years ago. Look, I know what you're thinking. He doesn't look that old. And I appreciate you saying that. I really do. But I am. All right. So mid to late 90s, fresh out of high school. And guess who's getting boycotted? Disney. Because, of course, they're a repeat offender. (laughs) They, The most recent boycotts, not their first time to the dance. Okay. They've been around. They've probably been boycotted more than any company I've seen. Starbucks is probably like right behind them. You know, but in those 30 years, Disney is probably been the subject of boycotts more than any other company I've seen. So mid to late nineties, and it is over a very similar topic that they're getting boycotted for now. And that's their promotion of LGBTQ. I think back then it was just LGB and what they were doing was, and I don't remember if this is when they like first rolled it out or how long it had been going on, but they were introducing pride week or pride day. I can't remember, uh, you know, where they were inviting people to come and, and, you know, they were rolling out all the rainbow flags and everything everywhere. And so they were, they were doing this, uh, this day or week of, of affirming, uh, LGB groups and inviting them to come to the park. And, you know, I think, that was the big driving force at that point. And people, you know, across church, across America and churches all over the nation were saying, we're done. We're boycotting Disney, like no family vacations to Disney world, Disneyland, or any affiliated park, like no way, no how they're not getting our money. Right. That's probably hard for a lot of people. Cause that's like a go-to family vacation destination. Right. So I know a group that took it a little bit further. In in addition to boycotting going to the parks, there may or may not have been a large bonfire one night. And this is where people were bringing 
all kind of Disney merch and stuff. And look, another another show of age here. And, and some of you, some of you that consume a lot of YouTube are probably not going to know what this word means. VHS. All right. People were bringing their VHS Disney tapes and burning them, throwing them in the fire. Google VHS. Go ahead and Google um, cassette tape while you're at it, just so you have that for future reference, because I'm sure I'll bring it up. I'm a Gen Xer. Of course, I'll bring it up. But people were bringing their VHS tapes uh, that were Disney movies and throwing them in the fire in addition to like posters and uh, calendars, stuffed animals, shirts, all kind of stuff. Now, I wasn't a Disney enthusiast. I, I think I had been to Disneyland when I lived in California when I was young once. And I, I think I'd been to Disney World in Orlando maybe once by that point. Uh, was not a big keepsake person, didn't have Disney gear, but I'm sure I helped others empty out their buckets or backpacks or whatever it was they had to throw their stuff in the fire. And that was my first experience with a boycott. So it's been 30 years. And again, Disney has been brought into the boycott discussion over and over and over again. I think they made the list again in the last six months because of uh, one of the characters in uh, one of their cartoons that they put on Disney plus was LGBTQ something. I I'm not sure what the character represented exactly, um, but I do remember there was a character that caused a bunch of controversy in one of the cartoons in the last six months. And so it called for this boycott, uh, of Disney plus and all these people were posting all over social media that they were canceling their Disney plus subscriptions. So Disney once again in the boycott news, but the most recent one I think we've seen is target. And this, this really came because of the display, the children's display that they were putting together for pride month for the month of June. And from what I understand, most of the Target stores were putting them in the front of the store. So like as soon as you walked in, you would see this display. And it was, I guess, pretty decent sized. So the big controversy came really in, in two parts. One was the age of kids that they were providing things for. I mean, I think people felt that it was inappropriate that they were um, promoting things to small children anyway, but there were like zero to four year old items. Like uh, I remember seeing a onesie, there were some other things, toys and different things that were um, really promoted, promoted for very small children. And that was one of the big issues. The other one was one of the designers who helped create some of the items. Uh, th there was this designer who is, I don't believe American, but they have their own website and they, they created like a certain portion of, of items for target specifically. And that person, uh, from what I understand is, is a professing Satanist, uh, is very, uh, vocal in their beliefs and their website. I, I did go look at it at one point and it, it had some pretty disturbing items. There were like some madness or key chains or things that were very dark in how they kind of spoke about conservatives or those who disagreed with their beliefs. I mean, it was, it was some disturbing stuff. I mean, it's not something you would think regardless of the LGBTQ angle, it's it, the stuff, how dark it was. It's just something you wouldn't think that you would present to children. I, I mean, it was definitely, it was disturbing for adults to read some of the things that were on this, this person's website. So those were the two main issues in addition to just the display in general. And so there was a call to boycott target. Now, right before that it was Bud Light. Bud Light got called in uh, for boycott uh, right around March madness. So a few months ago, and this was when they made the decision to uh, plaster on, on, all of their beer cans, the, the image of Dylan Mulvaney. And then I believe provide some corresponding like video ads as well. And so there was a big call to boycott Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch as a whole and whatever other uh, beers that they uh, were over, but Bud Light being the main one, Bud Light and Budweiser from what I understand. 
So there have been a lot of other little ones. You know, uh, there's been, I think Starbucks has been back on the boycott train uh, due to an ad they ran in India promoting, uh, I think it was a, a transgender ad. And then who else? The LA Dodgers have been there. There's theirs is because of, of them wanting to honor LGBTQ groups at a pride night in the month of June at the stadium at one of their home games. And one of those groups does a lot of stuff in their show uh, where they really kind of dig at Catholics specifically. They, they dress up as nuns when they do certain dancing sets and, and other things that they do uh, that I want to talk about specifically. But I can see where those within the Catholic community would be pretty offended by the things that they do. And so they, you know, the Catholic community kind of kind of raised uh, their voices out against that group being honored on Pride Night. And the L.A. Dodgers actually uninvited that group. And then they started getting blowback from the LGBTQ community. So then they re-invited them and then tacked on like a, a faith night for Christians and religious people somewhere else in the summer uh, as I think an attempt to pander uh, to them and to, to try to placate both sides because they were starting to catch flack from both sides. Bud Light, same thing. Bud Light started to kind of catch flack from both sides. And so I think these organizations and companies are trying to figure out how to how to keep both sides happy so they don't start losing more money uh, by having both both sides start to boycott them. Uh, so the Dodgers, the Ford, they came out with a an ad with a with one of their trucks. I think the Raptor and uh, all the mud washes off and it's rainbow colored and people called to uh, we're done. We're going to boycott Ford. We're going to buy trucks from from other people. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Coles, Coles came into the mix. And even more recently, uh, interestingly, has been The Chosen, the, the TV show The Chosen. So there, there was a lot of controversy on Twitter over The Chosen, you know, people who really spoke out against it for other reasons. But then most recently, there was a, a an image, a picture that was shared on the official Chosen uh, social media pages that included uh, a rainbow flag on one of the the camera gear makeups whatever whatever it was some one of the cameras i think um a camera stand or something and so now people have been putting the chosen's name out there as as uh, an option to boycott as well so so there's there's no shortage of groups or organizations to boycott you know um the one thing that that I noticed the the theme throughout all of them is that they're they're all being called into boycott for the, for promoting the same thing, you know, something along the LGBTQ uh, groups or uh, Pride Month or something in 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 that vicinity is in their promotions and their advertisements is leading to uh, the calls to boycott these companies. And I guess I, the thing I want to talk to Christians about is just our hearts. You know, what what really is the criteria for a boycott? I know that we see this theme with all of these companies, but are there other things? You know, I think uh, companies who are open and and actively support abortion would also be called into a boycott by Christians. And then I've seen some who are who lean kind of more into like the. Uh, CRT critical race theory who would be considered like woke you, you see some some groups calling to to boycott organizations like that you know it's the whole like go woke go broke kind of kind of slogan and so there are other reasons why uh, christian groups church groups might call for boycott but it does seem to be that uh, lgbtq affirmation and and different aspects of that are the number one reason, the number one common factor among companies that that are boycotted. So this is what I want to ask Christians. Is that is that really the criteria? Is it is it LGBTQ uh, promotion or affirmation, abortion, and 
like woke ideology are those is that the criteria for a boycott like i really want to know like if if you have a boy if you have a boycott criteria please put it in the comments i would like to know like what it takes for you to boycott a company for you to say i'm not going to give that company my money i'd like to know because i don't know that i've seen a set criteria you know like, like a you know a booklet that says if you check these boxes like we're gonna we're gonna go on social media and call for a boycott of your company or organization i haven't seen that so i'm interested to know because here, here's my thing do we do we hate sin do we hate sin in general do we love righteousness as christians that's what we're called to we're called to hate sin the way god hates sin we're called to love righteousness the way god loves righteousness we are called to walk in holiness we're we're told to be holy as he is holy now that idea is be perfect as i am perfect and and, and god saying that knowing that we can't achieve perfection on this side of eternity we are called to strive towards that. It's called sanctification, right? That, that's that process of, of being sanctified, being uh, made into his image, growing in the character of God, growing in the fruit of the spirit. So as we, as we grow, we are called to be holy. We are called to be set apart from the world, from sin, but also set apart unto God. That's what holiness is being set apart. That means we're different, right? And that means that we hold the Bible as the source and standard of truth. Like that is our standard. When we want to think about, you know, what is righteous living and, and what is it to hate sin? We look to scripture as our, as our guideline for that. So with that being said, are these the only three things we're willing to to take this firm of a stance on. And the reason I ask that is because these are three things that pretty much any conservative or Republican, some libertarians would take stands on politically, you know, and, and I look at that and, and I don't, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm definitely not saying that's wrong, but our call as Christians in our walk of uh, of being holy before a holy God is so much bigger than a few political platforms. Like it, it's much more encompassing. Like those are those are part of it. Standing for truth, like that's part of it, but that's definitely not the whole picture. And look, I'm not trying to be one of those guys who, when you you post about a boycott, comes in and goes, "Well, lying." lying's a sin too, you know, and saying other things like those guys, like I see it, their, their, their tone seems to be snarky. They're coming with what they think is like a gotcha. Like, Oh, uh, let me, let me call you a hypocrite by saying that you don't speak out against lying, you know, in the same way. And so now that I've called you a hypocrite on Twitter, ha, gotcha. No. I'm not that guy. I don't care for those people. I don't think that I don't think it's the gotcha. They think it is. Uh, I think it's weak. I think it's keyboard warrior stuff. Um, definitely wouldn't hold up in any regular debate uh, type scenario, but, but I do want to raise this question. Do we hate other sins equally? You know, do we, do we hate lying? Do we hate, um, other things, like if you go and read scriptures that talk about homosexuality and sexual immorality in general, you you are going to see lying, uh, those who cause division among the brethren. You're going to see other sins listed in those same passages. Are we um, as fired up about standing against those mm -hmm. sins as we are this one? I'll even say this: Can we say? that we're even as fired up to stand against other sexual sins as we are against homosexuality. So when we read scripture and, and we would say homosexuality is a sin, I, 
I think anybody who holds that belief from scripture would also say and agree that adultery is sin, that fornication, uh, you know, sexual relationships outside of marriage, that that is sin as well. So here's why I, I pose this question and here's why I want to challenge our hearts. I've, I've seen this happen. I have talked to people who watch a TV show and somewhere along the line, let's say like season three, a, a character comes out of the closet or a new character comes onto the show who is part of the LGBTQ community. And I'll hear the, I'll hear the people say, Oh, they had to go ruin the show trying to shove their, you know, indoctrination and their agenda down our throats. They had to ruin the show. Now, the thing is some of these shows for the first two seasons would have had uh, adulterous relationships would have had uh, relationships where they were fornicating and at no point did those things cause the person to turn the show off and boycott it. It wasn't until someone from the LGBT community was was introduced to the show that all of a sudden now it's time to boycott the show. But, but other sexual sins can be shown in previous seasons and, and it not impact our viewership at all. As long as it was between two people of the opposite sex, we would tolerate it. As soon as it becomes two people of the same sex or they start talking about terms of non-binary or anything of that nature, now it's time to boycott. Now it's time to cut the show off. And this is what I'm talking about. We've got to be consistent as Christians in our hatred for sin. And if we're going to be so fervent in our stance against sexual sin, then we have to be consistent in that stance. If we're going to say that this sexual sin over here bothers us, then we can't be tolerant of this sexual sin over here. If we're saying that this sexual sin ruins a TV show or movie for us, then we have to start questioning why these other sexual sins didn't bother us. Why those we were able to, you know, absorb and just chalk it up to as part of the entertainment. But now all of a sudden we're upset. This is the heart the part of our hearts I want us to, to challenge and to be challenged and, and to consider examine my heart, see if there be any wicked way within me. Uh, you know, we, we are called to stand against sin. We are, but here's some of the things we have to remember. All right. Non-Christians, unbelievers, the world, they're going to sin. All right. Christians sin, but the world the world does not have Christ. They do not have the Holy Spirit living in them. Okay. Sinners are going to sin. Heathens going to heathe. That's what they do. That is what they do. Okay. And we're over here and we're getting so angry about their sin. But we're very tolerant of our own sin. We're very tolerant of the sins that we're kind of okay with. I think about like the book Jerry Bridges wrote, uh, I think it's Acceptable Sins, I think is the title of it, where he talks about, you know, he goes through a list and talks about different different sins that the church has kind of just glossed over, that, that those sins don't bother us anymore, right? I'm just saying we need to be consistent. We need to be consistent. We, we need to be looking at our own hearts, first and foremost. We need to have the same fervency when we speak out against sin within the church, as we do when we're speaking out against sin, we see in the world, like, yes, stand against it. We are supposed to stand against it. We are supposed to hate the sin that we see in the world. Yes. Yes. Speak out against it, but be consistent, be consistent in your stance against sin when it comes to other sins, especially of a similar nature, when it comes to sins within our own lives, you know, let's, let's be 
consistent. The other thing I, I think about is the duration of a, of a boycott. How long, you know, not only do I not under, fully understand what the criteria is exactly for a boycott, but I don't understand what the criteria is for how long one happens. And the reason I ask this is because, like I said, 30 years ago, there was a Disney boycott. 30 years later, they're being boycotted again for the I don't know how many a time. Target being boycotted again in the last couple months. I think it was three or four years ago. There was a call to boycott Target because they said you can use whatever bathroom you want. And people were saying, well, I'm concerned. I can't go into a Target and let my daughter use the bathroom because I don't know if a guy is going to go in there saying that he identifies as a woman and I don't feel that my daughter would be safe. So there was this call to boycott Target. So if we boycotted Target four years ago, why are they being called to be boycotted like three, four weeks ago? I thought we were already boycotting them. I thought we were already boycotting Starbucks. I thought we were already boycotting Disney because of things that they had done before and promoting uh, LGBTQ uh, agendas or whatever. And, you know, I just think of, of, of other companies and I, I just... I don't understand like do what not, I guess not only what is the criteria to start a boycott, what's the criteria to stop one? What is it that has led us to stop boycotting target to where now a few weeks ago, they have to be put back on the boycott list. Like what is, what gets them off the list? Like how do the, like at what, how much money do they have to lose? What um, social media posts or, PR stunts do they have to pull that make us go, okay, all right, they suffered enough. I really need my body wash. Target's the only one that has it. Or oh, my kids really want to go to Disney. They have the new Star Wars ride. I gotta go do the Star Wars ride or or whatever. You know, it's I wonder how many people uh who did the whole like Twitter posts, Facebook posts, whatever it was saying that they canceled their Disney plus subscription. I wonder how many of those people over the next five years will have family photos standing outside magic kingdom. How many? Hmm. It's a good question. It's a good question. Why do our boycotts not last? I mean, I, I've heard it said that there was some CEO. I can't remember who he was, which company said that he, he didn't worry about Christian boycotts because they only lasted a few weeks, you know, and he, he just felt like, whatever temporary money he lost in the grand scheme of things, wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, you know, and there's some truth to that. I hate to say it, but there's some truth to that. So like, wh what is it? Because here's the thing. We're so vocal. We're so, so vocal about these boycotts, but we're not consistent. I don't think in boycotting sin, we're not consistent in boycotting, even boycotting all sexual sin equally. Uh, we're not very consistent or persevering in how long we're willing to boycott. And the issue with that is it, it starts to look like virtue signaling. I, I hate to use that word here, but, but that's what it looks like when we're, when we're so vocal on social media about it, but we don't stick to our guns because we don't want to be inconvenienced. It looks like a virtue signal. Also when we are so hardcore against one company, but this company over here gets a, gets a pass. It looks like a virtue signal. We don't look consistent. Look, I guarantee Apple has a lot of policies and personal beliefs that Christians would not agree with. I feel like Apple could throw out some of the most hardcore LGBTQ support videos and advertisements. They could throw rainbows on every product they have. Apple's not going to get boycotted. You know why? It would inconvenience people. Like, yes, not getting that cool picture frame from Target can be an inconvenience. Not getting that one shampoo or whatever it is that you normally get there can be an inconvenience, but not like giving up your iPhone. Let's, let's keep it real. Like people aren't going to boycott Apple. Nobody's getting rid of their iPhone. Nobody's going, Hey, you Apple, you're too woke. You're too pro LGBTQ. I'm going to Samsung. People aren't doing that. Nobody's giving up their Mac pro. They're just not doing that. Like that's the other thing. Like it's, it's easy to boycott companies that don't really, don't really cause a sacrifice. 
like let's keep it real i mean is it that big of a sacrifice to boycott bud light like most of these people are just gonna go drink another beer it's not like they're not getting beer it's not like there aren't other stores who carry very similar products to target it's not like you can't get that stuff on amazon or some other company it's out there you might pay a little bit more but it's it's there but how many i want to know is there a company that you've boycotted that it really inconvenienced you put that in the comments like i want to know and i want to know like in what way like how hardcore of an inconvenience was it what was it for you to boycott a certain company you know, like if you dropped thousands of dollars on Dodgers season tickets and you've decided to boycott the Dodgers and you're going to lose all that money, you know, like you're not selling it and making your money back. Like you're like, I'm burning the tickets and I'm just going to take the loss. Like, okay, that, that costs you something. Like, I want to know, is there, is there a story out there like that where like a boycott really, really kind of changed changed the way you do things on a on a daily weekly monthly basis you know i'm not talking about like oh i don't roll through starbucks anymore you know but i go over to this other one and i pay maybe a dollar more uh okay you pay a little bit more but you're also probably supporting a local business that's good um you know i don't know i just think these things are interesting when we think about boycotts look i'm not telling you I'll say this in closing. I'm not telling you to boycott. I'm not telling you not to boycott. You're not more virtuous. You're not more righteous if you boycott all these companies. Because the truth is, if you start a boycott in every company that supported LGBTQ groups and agendas, your shopping destinations would shrink dramatically. Dramatically. Just do a Google of all the companies who have changed their logo to a rainbow logo for Pride Month. If you want to boycott them all, you are going to be inconvenienced if you decide to boycott every single one of them. Yeah, your life is probably going to change. Um, so, so yeah, just think through this, right? Think through our hearts. Think through being consistent. Think through what causes us to boycott something. Think through um, if we are going to boycott, how vocal are we going to be about that? Um, how long are we going to do it? Is this, uh, is this something we're willing to do for life, forever? Uh, are we willing to spend a little bit more? If that means shopping at a company that we know is owned by Christians, uh, is that a change we're willing to make? Like, what are we willing to do in our life to take a stand against sin? You know, and again, understanding that just because you boycott something doesn't mean that you're more righteous. And, and on the flip side of that, if you're not boycotting, look, if you went to Target today and bought a Starbucks frappuccino and drank it while you walked around target and bought candles and and picture frames or whatever they have that doesn't make you less righteous it doesn't it doesn't mean that that you've sinned against god okay i want to be clear on both of those sides like there, there's not one that makes you more righteous one that makes you less righteous where you spend your money is a conviction that you need to pray about um, that you and your family need to talk about that's between you and them and you and god and i'm not here to judge you based on whether you do or do not um, boycott certain companies you know because then we have to start we really would start nitpicking every single co company and their beliefs and and we can all start virtue signaling back and forth on who's more righteous based on uh, how big the company is we boycott or how many companies we boycott. I mean, it can get ridiculous. I'm not here to, to tell you to or not to and to question your righteousness either way. I'm just here to, to ask you to examine your heart behind the criteria to, of your boycott, the criteria for ending your boycott, um, being cautious in your zeal. Um, I'm not saying it's bad to put it out there that you're, 
that you're boycotting something. I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying sometimes when I, th- I think about Jesus, when he talked about prayer and he talked about not, not going out there and praying so loudly that everyone could see, but, but going to a quiet secret place and praying, you know, when I think about boycotts, that might be wise counsel um, to maybe dial back the, the zealous posts about boycotts. If there may be concern at how consistent we can be, how long we can hold out from shopping at said place or taking that Disney vacation with our kids. Um, just really spend some time praying about it and just, just be consistent, be consistent. We, we don't need to be, you know, virtue signal, social media, keyboard warriors. That's not the call here. You know, our call isn't to, to, have gotcha moments or stick it to the man or anything like that. Our our call is to be faithful to Christ, faithful to the word of God, to hold the Bible up as the standard of truth that when it comes to these situations, quote scripture, put that out there. I'd much rather see people posting scripture than posting um, all the boycotts they're doing. (laughs) Like, let's share scripture about the issues surrounding the boycott uh, more than we do talking about the boycott. Like let's, let's point people to the word. Let's point people to Jesus, you know, let, like, let that be our stand, you know? And I know some people are going to disagree. Some people are going to think that I'm being uh, weak or whatever. And, you know, that's fine. My channel's not that big. You can boycott me, add me to the list whatever (laughs) i'm good i'm good um i just want us to be faithful before the lord uh to encourage one another uh, and to to stand for truth you know so so that's really what we're about here at at deed and truth and uh you know we look forward to to hearing from you sharing some of the things in the comments uh you can connect with us on social media you can connect with me on twitter at deed underscore truth Uh, my personal one is tommy l morris at tommy l morris so you can uh, tweet me at either of those locations Uh, you can also find the deed and truth podcast on facebook and instagram Uh, if you are interested in audio only you can find us on pretty much any social media i mean uh, any podcast platform that's out there. So, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. Check out the website, deedandtruthpodcast.com. Make sure here on YouTube that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can get notified when we do other other videos or go live. And just remember, love God, love people, love truth. Right.